For those of us that are on that mission of trying to optimize our health and our biology, stacking and combining different therapies is a conversation that keeps coming up. We did a video, Red, Blue, and O2, looking at red light, methylene blue, hyperbaric oxygen, and combining all those together. And it generated a lot of comments and a lot of questions. So we're gonna go through and answer some of those comments and questions in this video right now. So essentially in the part one video of Red, Blue, and O2, and if you didn't watch it, please do, we talked about taking methylene blue at some point in the morning, giving it at least some period of time to get into your system and absorb, and then doing the red light session for about 15 or 20 minutes before hyperbaric oxygen. One of the comments we received was, my technician recommends red light after hyperbaric oxygen. Why are you recommending it before? I wanna start there and I wanna be a little bit more specific. First of all, we do methylene blue first, typically, because we do need it in our system. And so to take methylene blue and to have it running through your system before your red light session is important because red light activates methylene blue. And together, there's great synergy between methylene blue and red light while you're inside the chamber. So initially, when Brian Richards from Sauna Space and John Laurence from Advanced Rejuvenation and MitoZen and I sat down to create the Red Blue O2 protocol, it was really geared for a home user. What could you do at home to really be optimizing these therapies without having to come to a clinic like one of ours in order to receive these treatments? And so I say that because Typically, if I'm running hyperbaric at lower pressures, let's say 1.3 to 1.5, I will almost always do the red light session before hyperbaric because red light will A, synergize with the methylene blue, B, stimulate cytochrome C inside the mitochondria for improved ATP production, and C, help to release nitric oxide, which is going to cause vasodilation and improve our blood flow. Because with hyperbaric oxygen or oxygen delivered anyway, has a vasoconstriction effect. I like the idea of vasodilating before going in to try to improve blood vessel diameter while receiving hyperbaric and increasing blood flow while we're driving all of this additional oxygen into the system. So most people at home use a soft chamber. Most soft chambers are gonna be 1.5 or below, typically 1.3 atmospheres. And as a result, I like the red light before oxygen for these reasons. But on the flip side, in my clinic, sometimes I do red light after instead of before. And the real reason for that is not necessarily because I think red light is more advantageous after, but it's also back to that vasodilation, vasoconstriction. As we get higher in pressure, we get additional vasoconstriction, specifically to our central nervous system and to our brain. While our brain utilizes an enormous amount of oxygen, it's very metabolically active, making up about 2% of our body mass, but using between 20 to 25% of all the oxygen in our body, it's also the most sensitive to over-oxidation. In fact, central nervous system oxygen toxicity is a real thing to be concerned about, especially at higher pressures. In addition to the high level of oxygen causing oxygen toxicity, it's really carbon dioxide, which is a vasodilator as well, which can trigger central nervous system oxygen toxicity symptoms, including things like convulsions. So the same way in hyperbarics that we try to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide inside the chamber, especially at high levels, would to me be the same reason to not necessarily use red light prior to that session. At higher pressures, I don't want a big vasodilation before going into the chamber but I certainly would use it afterwards in order to get the most synergy between those two tools as we can. We'll get right back to that video, but real quick, if you're a practitioner or you're looking to get into hyperbarics and you're wanting to learn more and making sure that you're offering this therapy as effectively and as safely as possible, I want you to know that we offer a series of courses, some of which are online and some of which are in person. At thehbotcourse.com, we'll include a link below. We have several courses available from training and certification in hyperbaric medicine, safety director, as well as a few different business implementation options to get the business up and running. So if you think that training and education would be helpful for you, take a look at thehbotcourse.com. Again, the link will be in the description below. Now back to our video. The other thing I wanna add here is this. If you're on this journey and you're really looking at improving your health, whether you have a diagnosis and we're trying to move you back in a healthy direction, or you're already pretty healthy and you're really just looking to optimize, once you're using all these different strategies and utilizing all of these different modalities and you're doing it on a regular basis, I'm less convinced that specific timing is so important. In other words, methylene blue will stay in your system for a few days. And if you're taking it every few days or taking it for a few days and then taking a break and taking it for a few days and taking a break, it's in your system. 
And as a result, utilizing red light at any point in time is going to have some amount of synergy between the red light and the methylene blue. And as long as you're using your red light and your hyperbaric oxygen on some regular basis, they're both going to improve mitochondrial function. They're both going to improve the balance of the different nitric oxide synthase molecules inside your body. They're both going to reduce inflammation and they're both going to improve mitochondrial function and ATP synthesis. So utilizing them regularly is what's important. If you did the red, blue, and O2 protocol once a month or twice a month and that was it, you're probably never going to get these benefits anyway. It's really what you do on a regular basis that's going to shift your health. And so consistency and duration is going to be the most important component of any of these protocols. Individually, the frequency and the duration of any of these tools is going to vary greatly between me and you. Very often when I'm lecturing from stage, I talk about the fact that there are certain ingredients that are just about universally necessary for all of us to improve our health. It doesn't necessarily matter where we are on the health continuum, very, very chronically ill on this journey of health optimization, or likely somewhere in the middle. The ingredients to create human health are almost always going to be the same. The differences are going to be in the frequency, the duration, and the intensity. Somebody who's moderately healthy looking to optimize, they'll use the same ingredients, but they won't need to be as frequent. They won't need to be as long. They won't need to be as intense. Somebody who's pretty ill trying to regain their strength, trying to regain their health, they'll use those same ingredients, but much more intensely, much more frequently at much longer durations in order to get back to this point of better health. So the protocol question is just difficult to answer because it's very individualized. But once you start to understand what these tools are doing inside your body, and if you could place yourself somewhere on that continuum and understand what intensity and frequency and duration you need, or better yet, even find somebody you could work with, a trusted practitioner who understands these concepts, then together with whatever your goals are or whatever your health concerns are and whatever testing we can do, the individualized protocol that you need can be developed. So I hope that helps answer at least some of the comments and questions we got from Red, Blue, and O2 part one. But we also did do videos on hyperbaric oxygen and red light, hyperbaric oxygen and methylene blue, what these tools are doing, how they work, why somebody would choose to use those, how do you start considering what the dosages would be. And so in these two videos, we have a red light and a methylene blue. Please click on those, check those out, because I'm sure that those will answer additional layers of questions in terms of those ingredients relative to your overall health and how they fit into this conversation around hyperbaric oxygen.